Morgan, the feature writer for the San Antonio Marriage Initiative. I am so pleased today to introduce you to Gina and Craig Morgan. Craig and Gina learned many lessons from their 1996 marriage and subsequent blending of seven his, hers, and ours kids together. Lessons that form the foundation of the ministry they started in 2011. Blended Together Forever offers hope, encouragement, and resources for blended families. We're going to learn how you and your churches can partner with the Morgans to help the blended families in your congregations thrive. Craig and Gina, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, thank Amy. You. We're grateful to be here. Good to see you. Yes. Oh, this is fun. And fellow Morgans, even though we're not related at all. <laughs> I'll have to check that out. <laughs> I love it. Well, you know, from your story, this is an area that you have experientially lived. Can you kind of tell us a little bit about how how this all started, how you guys found each other and how how you realized the need for the resources that you've now created? Sure. I'll let Gina tell you how we began and then I'll tell you how that beginning sprung into trying to start a nonprofit. Right, right. right. Well, it, it all started. Um, Back in 1993, we had a mutual friend that uh, had, had this great idea that she was going to fix us up on a blind date. <laughs> <laughs> she knew that we were both uh, had been in marriages that our spouses had left, and she thought it would be a great idea for us to meet each other. Well, after a few attempts, um, getting me to come to Dallas. <laughs> so, And this was back, you have to remember, no cell phones, no Facebook. No Instagram. It was a true blind date. Yeah. Wow. So it finally worked out. And when we all uh, went out as couples and had dinner together and uh, it, the story kind of went from there, we dated off and on for three years. Um, mm -hmm. We had some pretty high walls um, built up and uh, some trust, probably some trust issues there yeah. and dated off and on. And, um, and of course I had, I had four boys. He had a boy and a girl. So I'm sure he took that into consideration. Like, nope, not going to happen. <laughs> so, and how old were your children at this time? What was the age range? Ten, well, ten all the way down to two. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So a big, big, uh, big group there. Yes. And um, so finally, in 1996, we tied the knot and had his, mine, and ours. So. Um, fast forward today, we have seven grown children that are out of the house and grandbaby number six and seven on the way. Yeah. <laughs> so, wow. Oh. Yes. And lots of stories in between oh, that yeah. that I just told you. There's a lot that goes in between that. Mm -hmm. We just celebrated um, 20, we're at 26 and a half years yep. now that we've been married. So lots of stories, lots of fun, lots of tears. Lots of growth mm -hmm. um, in between, but it it is it is possible, and um, oh, and then yeah. you're and then the honeymoon comes at the end. So starting about what six years ago, we just started our honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> when you became empty nesters, yes. Right. Um, well, I know you you guys realized, especially you know even at the very beginning, you know blending six children ages two to ten because yours were kind of in the middle there craig right of the the ten was the oldest and the two right. was little and right. so yours were the middle you noticed there were some challenges and i know those are some things that then you've wanted to help other people address what what were some of the things because people that that start without children they you know these are unique to blended families but you're not alone in fact how many we talked about a statistic about how many blended families i mean it's very very common it is there's 113 million adults that have at least one step type relationship and I didn't catch the vision, Amy, early. It was our pastor. It was Mother's mm -hmm. Day many years ago. He approached me and he said, Craig, I've been reading up on like there's 40 percent of the whole U.S. population that are raising blended families. And he knew we were because mm -hmm. we were a member there. And he goes, I think this Mother's Day, I want to do something different for our service. I'd like you and Gina just to share your testimonial of what you're doing to try to blend your family as one. I said, well, okay. So I kind of thought that's all we were called to do. And that was going to be the end of it. Yeah. 
Uh, well, <laughs> let's just say long story short, uh, the Lord kind of kept knocking on my heart and it kept being a burden, to be honest with you, Amy, until we finally surrendered. I, I just started Googling and YouTubing. I could not find evidence of one blended family ministry. And I'm talking about in the entire United States. And so then this burden became almost overbearing. And I said, we have to do something because there's a gazillion people right. that have walked in our shoes and there was no help. There was no. So that was what the real birth came out of was a burden, really, like we have to do something. So that's why we did. Well, and second marriages, I mean, there are statistics with second marriages do have, you know, it, like like you and I had discussed, it's not just, oh, second marriage, now this one's good. The second marriages have some disadvantages and they have some obstacles. And especially if you're adding kids to the mix to, like you said, there it's just not going to be just okay. We have to Right. help people become okay right. and you you i know you felt sometimes not always you know that obviously that pastor in that church was very welcoming but you said sometimes the church wasn't super helpful yeah i'm gonna let gina we've got a couple of favorite stories of how that happened i'll let her tell that but that's very typical and it, it can be so yeah yes tell what happened to us um well we we just began to notice um anytime we attended like a there wasn't obviously Sunday school classes for blended families or small groups um, right. back then. Um, there are more now, um, but we'd go to Sunday school. And of course, you know, in Sunday school, they always want you to stand up or tell a little bit about yourself. So when we would say, um, you know, married however many years, seven kids, you know, when they came by to meet us afterwards, they'd say, wow, you've had seven kids. And I said, well, I've had five of them. We have his, mine and ours. And we would get the, oh, Oh, and then you would just feel kind of that black cloud swirling over the top of you like, you know, oh, you're defected. <laughs> you're, you know, you're not from this world or something. And you it just didn't make you feel like really there was a place that we fit in. We and had, I think this is a real point where our marriage mentors yeah. might want to just do a little gut check and yeah. say, you know, we need we need to, to think about this and, and think about our attitude and our heart to be, you know, as they're thinking about engaging with you guys and think about engaging in a way that's going to make their their families feel yeah, better. Absolutely. Right. Because the biggest percentage of those families sitting in those pews, unfortunately, are blended families right. or second marriages or third marriages. And, um, you know, they their their situation and their issues in their family are unique. They're different. They're not like any others. And we just were having a hard time finding answers and help um, for, you know, for those situations. And then I had noticed this was back when you could go actually go have lunch at school with your kids and sit at the table with them. And I noticed around this whole huge table, um, many weeks that I would go, all the kids, we got to talk in one day and Every child at that table was from a blended family. Mm -hmm. And I came home and I said to Craig, this is way more common right. than I ever, ever dreamed of. Yeah. Um, and also uh, the kind of thing that I went into it with was thinking, um, because we love each other, then our kids are going to love each other. And this is going to work out, you know, wonderful. And so that's why I'm saying the, the things, the situations with blended families and the issues that come up are a little bit different than just the, the typical right. nuclear family. So Craig, you had a great story about, you know, being at, at, at church and it's something about not being, you know, there are no second class Christians that everybody is a sinner redeemed by Christ. And could you, could you say a little bit more about that? Absolutely. And especially to anybody and everybody that's blended. Um, I know that I carried a lot of guilt, uh, even though I didn't feel like I was the sole reason that my first marriage didn't end. I felt guilt because my kids had to come through that process and I would have spared them for anything. And so we carry that. And then there's, again, the shame that Gina was kind of talking about, like you're almost shamed, like I'm in a second marriage. But I got so many stories. I mean, a friend of mine, um, who, by the way, they became blended not out of a divorce, but out of a death. 
right. uh, with mom. Mm-hmm. And so I remember this issue. He clearly was telling me a story and one of his kids came to him and said, well, dad, you can get a new wife, but we can't get a new mom. Mm-hmm. And so that's a whole nother blended type issue. So I think just to speak to anybody that may be blended, I know Satan's good at getting guilt and shame and whatever else he can to get to uh, our fear. I mean, I could, we could make the list, but Mm -hmm. there is no second class Christian because there is no first class. We are all leveled by the blood of the lamb and what Jesus did for us at the cross, period, end of story. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and you know, when you're talking that about that, I love what you had said earlier, Gina, about you just assume since we love each other, that the kids are going to love each other. And mm-hmm. I even, I get this, this funny vision in my head. Do you remember that cheaper by the dozen with uh, Dennis Quaid and Renee Russo and the kids are in active war yeah. against each other? Yeah. I had that feeling and your kids probably weren't in that, you know, of course, that's how you think of it. But you know, that's not always the case that the kids just love each other. And you had to, you had to walk through some of that. And mm-hmm. then that was one of the areas. I know you have several other areas. Talk about some of the areas that you help people with. Sure. Um, yeah, I think there's two or three that we really connected with. I'll let Gina share one of them and I'll share another one. But um, one would be realignment. Number two would be loyalty issues. And three is just a new vision because you've got a new family and I'll let her address Mm -hmm. that one that you can still honor some old traditions, but you got to do things different. So I'll tackle the first two on realignment in a nuclear first time marriage. They come first as husband, wife, and then the kids come second. But in a blended family, the kids come first and then the new spouse comes second. So over time, that's got to, that won't work forever. It can start that way, but the marriage eventually needs to be the most important thing in that family dynamic. And it's not going to start off naturally that way. I know you told a little example of shotgun. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And that made it so clear. Could you say that again? Cause that just, that just made it so clear. Right. Happy to. When uh, when I was a single dad living on my own, I had an apartment and it was upstairs and I had two little kids that would spend the night and I would take them to school to elementary school. And it was always the fun game of I beat you. So I get to ride in the front seat with dad. They'd say shotgun. Mm-hmm. And whoever said first, the other one had to get in the back. Oh, yeah. Well, and I get that. But when when I married Gina, and they want to say shotgun. I'm like, uh, I, know she's shotgun. <laughs> well, um, I love you, but I need to have you get in the back seat because Gina's now going to ride in the front seat. And there's two issues there. Number one is I'm like, uh oh, here we go, a little more guilt. We were doing it this way, and now I've got to realign. Um, and they may be feeling we are finally getting used to this new normal, and now we're going to mess it up again so i felt more for them i just see that the issues of both sides more compassion today mm-hmm. at the first we were we were kind of blind i think it'd be fair to very, say we did very. the best we could yeah so there's just some of those things that happen and uh i'll let her talk about the the new traditions and what <laughs> yeah. we learned at holidays yeah. and special days yeah. so so we literally you know talk about failing forward yeah. Um, we literally were failing forward without any, you know, any help, any books, not much guidance at all. Um, so certainly if we can do it, anybody can do this. That's true. That's <laughs> you just true. stick with it and don't give up. Um, but coming into it with the holidays um, would come around. You know, I did what I was used to doing. And that was, you know, putting up the tree with all the ornaments that I brought with all my kids, we had grandparents that were given ornaments to the kids kind of to help blend the tree together. And, and it was just, it was tough. It was really tough because, you know, um, as for so many men, they come into a marriage, they don't bring their Christmas decorations or any of that stuff. So it was a real painful time for him. And so seeing 
my stuff and my traditions, if I could go back and do it different, would probably be just to start all over or to allow the kids to have, you know, two different trees, you know, their tree that's, you know, their things that they brought in with them, you know, each one and us to have a, a tree together, you know, for, you know, for the, to kind of signify the newness of coming together with all, you know, the new things. Um, and the same with like just the outings, um, the things that we mm -hmm. did at Christmas um, to change those up a little bit and do different things that are new that also signify, you know, a new beginning. Um, it's not like building for the future, right? right. To, to you know, while honoring the past. Like we always went and, and skated at the Galleria the day after Christmas and ate there at the restaurant on the ice. So we all went and did that. Well, that didn't, that was just, it was, it was a mess. <laughs> like I said, it was so, some of the things we learned, you know, by just going forward and, and messing it up and then sitting down and, and rewriting it. Right. So, yeah, that was definitely something to do is to, to rewrite our holidays that would be new while honoring the past, but going forward. And you have now what? Thanks Christmas, thanks Miss or something now? Uh, no. Our daughter created that term. She goes, Why don't we have a thanks Miss? That's something between <laughs> Thanksgiving, think Christmas. But, yeah. But any yeah. ideas are great ideas. Yeah. Uh, but I think, like Gina said, you want to honor the past because there's some security in that. Yes. But you can't make your blended family all about the past because that you've got to create new, right. anything new. Because then that newness is about us, about current, about where we're going. And it wasn't yeah. something you did with anybody in the past. No. Yeah. And you had a third point, too. You said Gina was going to do the, the uh, tell me about that third point. Loyalty. Yes. Uh, loyalty is always the undertone in every conversation. And it's hard. Mm -hmm. um, as, as an example, um, she had one of her kids that he was very vocal. Uh, he would always <laughs> tell his, his opinion and where we should go to eat and all, I mean, anything and everything. And never knew, no problem about how he felt. But uh, when my, let's just say, and this happened a lot, my daughter said, hey, I know where we should go to eat dinner. Let's go to Chili's. Let's go out once a week. Let's go as a family. And then he would say, well, you just want to go to Chili's because that's where your daughter wants to go. I'm like, man, you know, so it, 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 but I get it. It's like, did he have the same respect of his opinion that I did my daughter? And I use this to Amy and one of our, I think I use this as an example when we talk, it's like a big triangle and the person at the top of the apex is always wondering these people down here in this corner or this corner, are they going to be loyal to me? And if you just put some titles there, like let's take my situation, here's Craig and here's my daughter and here's my stepson. Well, it is easier for me to be more alignment with my daughter than my stepson. And he's feeling the same thing. He put him on the top and it's, there's always that kind of a loyalty triangle. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think what helped us, me, she was better than this than me, but what really helped me, Amy was, I thought, okay, I'm going to really try to understand the road they've walked, meaning not my non-biological children, mm -hmm. what they felt, what they've had to deal with, you know, what, how they responded. And they were, all, they were all different, but it, again, it helped me come across with a lot more understanding and compassion once right. I took the time to try to travel the tracks that they walked. Right. Well, and this is, these are some of the lessons then that you learned through trial and error and the fiery darts and, and but you're on the other side. Yes. And, now, and so how now are you through your ministry helping others. How can our marriage champions as they're thinking, maybe they're the one that's blended or maybe they're thinking about starting a blended Sunday school class or how can, how can they connect with you? What will, how can they connect and, and what, what will you help them do? Well, we would love to. Um, we wrote a book. Uh, it's actually like Gina said, it's a workbook yeah. for leaders like 
people at SAMU that want to take the content and do a small group or a Bible study. It's called mm-hmm. Building Blocks for Making the Family Whole Again. And on this leader guide, it has all the scripture reference. There's a video that introduces every subject and all the participants have a book that they can literally fill in the blanks and they can grow together. And it can be done in a home setting, a church setting, a school setting. It can be used in any kind of settings. Um, That's that's. That's one big thing, that resource. And then we would pray that from that small group, that there'd be another leader that would see the need and and kind of say, you know what, I'd like to champion this and multiply this because that's how we want the word to get out. We'd love to be just a ambassador friendship type relationship to anybody that would like to just spread the the material because we think that can reach a lot of families. Um, And uh, that, that would be the one way that comes to my mind, Amy. And that would really help them, you know, have that support. And you do some, some community building too, don't you? We do. We do. We have uh, got some great social media things in the works right now that we're really pumped up about. Uh, We, another thing. (laughs) Another thing that a friend of mine, we want to crank out, he said, like a thousand videos. What what he means by that is get actual end users, husbands, wives, even kids and whoever that could teach a principle. And we could put those short little, you know, video uh, segments out on social media that could be shared and sent out. So. We think those two is kind of a basic strategy piece of social media with video content and then actually small groups. And hopefully from that, leaders would go, wow, this is needed. It resonates with my heart, like the interview you did with James and Monica Shaw. Mm -hmm. And then others can just compound that in their church and then across the country. And that would be a blessing. And you have some connections with that, don't you? Don't you have some churches that have communities that have, like you said, back there were no blended family Sunday schools. And sometimes you or Sunday school classes. And sometimes you felt kind of excluded. And so you have a network, right? That If if people go to your website, they can find churches maybe that or learn how to to start that group themselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. How about if you grab your book and just yeah. tell me, like, look through and is there one of like your favorite principles or something particular that just really hits home that would be a lesson that our, our marriage champions would be interested in? Yeah, I, w- I would say I, I want to talk about it in a minute because mm-hmm. um, we know God truly had his hand on us um, oh, yeah. writing this workbook. Um, it it took quite a bit of time. It was us going back into a lot of our pain, which week after week, I would tell them just about every week, I'm done. I'm not doing any more. You can do it by yourself. (laughs) I think I said that every week (laughs) because it was parts of it very painful. And um, but yet when we would go and speak, I would hear people come up and ask me the same questions that I knew we were working on. And I thought this is okay, God, I got it. I know it's needed. I'm going to I'm going to show up next week and do my work again. So, um, and just a lot of prayer went into this and we have seen when we piloted this at our church, we have seen the people have the aha moments. We've seen them come together and just, I mean, I'm talking about couples, but, and also as a group, the chemistry that was formed in the friendships and them seeing, I think one of the biggest challenges is they don't want to always show up at classes because they don't want to feel like they have a problem or they're different or they need something um, that's Mm -hmm. out of the ordinary, um, you know, a nuclear family. So we saw the couples that the light bulb would go off. We saw them, you know, create the, the friendships that came from it because they were with like-minded people and they felt like I've found my people. (laughs) So that was such a beautiful gift in seeing this, you know, when we piloted it. Um, 
And I just want to say, I love the part in there that talks about, you know, the holidays create the special nights. We had theme night on Monday nights for dinner and the kids would get to pick what they wanted uh, to have. And we, you know, we decorated a little bit. We wouldn't go overboard, but we just have fun with it that way. And we had a Monday night that was always our family night um, <laughs> that yeah. uh, some quite funny things came out of those nights that the kids <laughs> as adults still talk about to this yeah. day. And, and most of it usually, uh, revolved around Craig teaching a leadership. We also, we always had a Bible study and a leadership lesson. And a lot of times, by the time we get to the leadership lesson, they would try to pull some kind of prank or do something to get me laughing that would get him then, you know, not happy that <gasps> I was, you know, succumbing to their silliness, but I couldn't help it. They were just, you know, we had six boys and one girl and these oh. boys were oh. straight up comedians. <laughs> and so there was always something going on. But anyway, I, you know, I, I remember and loved the family nights and that was a special part in here. We talked about that. Yeah. Oh, I love that. <laughs> can, you think of, can you think of one example? Uh, yes. Oh, boy. <laughs> you mean of what they did? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. I guess about the time um, that landline phones were kind of still in the house, but most of the kids, you know, that were teenagers had the cell phones. Uh, we, <laughs> we had one that any time the landline phone rang, um, he had to jump and get the, the phone. The one back. I talked about a minute ago. That <laughs> yeah, oh, the opinion one, yes. A very much a social butterfly of, Big time. of the high school of the town of, yes. Yeah. And uh, so anytime the phone rang, he would want to jump and go get it. And I, I remember one night Craig specifically saying, sit down, leave the phone. Don't worry about the phone. If it's important, they'll leave a, a voice. Yes. Well, what we didn't know is that about the time Craig would get started back into his lesson again, the phone would ring again. <laughs> and what we didn't know it was his son underneath the table with the cell calling it, calling it just to just, I mean, just to get him going. And I mean, all the other kids knew that yeah. he was doing it. <laughs> so, oh, that's so funny. I, I can't imagine that many boys. That's a basketball team. And yeah. one. Yeah. Plus one. Yeah. And your poor little daughter. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Yeah. She's going to be tough as nails. She, she was. was. She was a softball player and she could handle her place. No problem. Um, but we had so much fun. We, we traveled with them a lot. And people used to ask us in the airport if we were youth ministers. And we said, well, I guess you could say that. But we can spank these. We're in youth group in our own house. Yeah. So we had a lot of good memories, um, a lot of fun times. And, uh, you know, sometimes not so fun times. Yeah. But uh, they all they all worked in together. When I tell people we are a miracle in progress, um, you know, there's no perfect family. But we, uh, we've certainly... We, you know, stayed the course. And I know at different times, the kids have told us they really appreciate yeah. our example of doing that. Um, because we always, we were pretty transparent. I mean, they knew that we were both flawed. <laughs> they knew that we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> so they were, you know, pretty forgiving about a lot of those things and said, you know, we were, they were proud that we stayed with it. Yeah. And that we're still together. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think, go ahead, Craig. And I was going to say, and, when you're looking at the book, when you ask that question, the very first quote, I, I guess I said it, I because Christine wrote it, uh, <laughs> came to my mind. But then what you just said um, it reminded me that regardless of how your friends and the people that follow Sammy or blended together or whatever church, whatever city in America, it doesn't matter how you start. I mean, it does, yeah. but it really, really, really matters how you finish. Yeah. And if you pass on a successful mm -hmm. role model that, yeah, maybe you had a bad start. Maybe this happened or that happened. But when they see something that worked, that child, that marriage, that next generation has just a successful rate as a first marriage. So it should give you hope that it doesn't matter what happened. If you'll give them. And that's why I think we're proud of, if I can say that, that they're going to get a vision and a picture of it's done well, even though it didn't start well. And, and, and that's where this yeah, quote that out of sorrow and disappointment, God often builds great faith. And that's what he's done for us. Yeah. It's all about God. It's not us. We've tried to be faithful. We've tried to grow with the Lord. That's the success we've had. Um, 
But again, the benefit down the road is we're going to see our kids uh, have a six pray that, you know, that they'll see that model. We pray for their their marriages and their future kids and grandkids. So take hope regardless how you start. You give this picture, y'all stay together and whatever it takes, it's worth it. It is worth it. It is. Oh, well, I don't think there's a better way to sum up than that. I mean, that is inspirational. That's exactly what we're trying to get across to our marriage champions. Um, and that's your heart is, yeah. is that, that inspiration, that marriage of 26 and a half years yeah. and, you know, learning some things and then with the heart and God's calling to pass it on to others. So thank you so much for being here. It's really helpful and genuine information. We're just so glad to, to have you guys. Thank you. Thank We're you. glad to be here. Yes, we are. Oh, and marriage champions, if you're interested in connecting with the Morgans, you can always find us at samarriage.org.